Hi, good night everyone. It's your girl here again, Barrel Princess, with another one for you. I'd like to share with you what really happened to me in the US. <laughs> Alright, so while I was in Jamaica, I was in a very, very good job. I was working in the office with one of those prominent companies. I suddenly just decided that, listen, I wanted to... You know, I just wanted a change and I'm just going to come to the U.S. I'm still in the U.S. by the way. I wear the pros and the cons and all. I spoke to my mother. I spoke to a couple few good friends that I have. They're like, remember, you need your SSN. And we all know what SSN is, your social security number. So you, you're going to need your SSN in order to work. And I figured I wouldn't have been able to, you know, immediately run back in the office, you know, something that I'm used to. I really figured that wouldn't have been the case but I was surprised right so when I just came up I came up I think it was in June or July and I took my little one with me so I started looking jobs I went on the sites and all so even though I was told about the SSN and I would need it etc etc so I'm like all right in no time I should be able to you know be up and running but I, I really didn't do my research and that was evident and you'll find out why i went to i remember this place um the manager really liked me there was a lady and, you know she complimented me on my clothes and we went there for training about three to four days for training and on the third on the fourth day the final day um they wanted the ssn and stuff so i said to the lady i speak to you outside and she came you know she pulled aside and i said to her um i haven't gotten my social security number as yet so i was wondering if i could you know put any for no i don't know i just said no i'm going to have to let you speak to she called the manager's name and i'm like okay then so i waited and um the manager came in about 15 20 minutes after she took me in her office and i said to her Basically, the same thing that I told the lady at the front, the receptionist. She said, no, we would be in trouble. We would be in so much trouble. And we will keep you in our database. And as soon as, you know, everything comes up and be sorted out for you, you can give us back a call. And, you know, we sat there probably about 10 more minutes and we talked a little more about it and what it means in the U.S. and why I can't, I can't work without it in the U.S. and all. I was very, very disappointed. Somehow, I thought that... I could jinx the system or cheat the system. And of course, when I when I just came up, I came up on a B1, B2 visa. I was just very, very disappointed. I came home and I was telling my mother, you know, that's how it is up here and this and that. But nonetheless, I was still on the line as I was still there looking and looking and looking for, for jobs, of course, in-office jobs. I have went on several interviews, right? And it's the same thing. And it's as if I, I, I didn't learn. And one day when I was coming home, I was hungry. So I stopped at the, the restaurant close to where I live. So I stopped there and I said to her, I ordered what I wanted, but I realized there was just one person in there. So I said to her, um, do you need anybody to work? And she's like, oh, yes, the summer is on us. And, you know, and she says, so, oh, really? So we sat there and we had a little mini interview. And uh, she told me that she pays $9 an hour. So I said, $9 an hour? How is that even possible? We talked and talked and I managed to bring it up to $10 flat. And she gave me the rundown and stuff and how it works there. And so I started the following day. It wasn't my dream job. No, it wasn't. And she gave me a shift and all. And, you know, I respected that because I knew that she could have possibly gotten in some trouble, serious troubles, had persons known my status, right? She has always said, listen, you may make friends here, but keep in mind, you need to keep your business to yourself. So she said to me, I would need to help the chef prep. And um, I'm like, um, okay, I don't mean to be ignorant, but um, what's prep again? So she's like, oh, you need, you, you know, they cut up the, the cabbage and they cut up the potato and the onions and all. I'm like, okay, all right. Uh, okay. 
so I said okay so what do I do around this side do I cash do I I'm not sure so she said that they'll train me she has this young lady with her who has been with her for quite a while and she'll she'll definitely give me some training and I'm like okay because I really I've never cashed professionally right but I know how to do it so I was more interested in that not necessarily in the prepping and the being in the kitchen and all that sometimes that she'll tell me and it's slow you can you know go and wrap some forks and i'm like what wrap forks why no you know when it's slow and then you can check if the chef needs additional help or you can go downstairs for the for the for the juices to pack the fridge you know what i've never ever needed to lift a box and i'm like she must be crazy and i'm like oh okay the first day, because I worked there probably for about two weeks, going into three weeks, the first day I packed the fridge was the day I left. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just cutting it short. The first day I packed the fridge there was the very same day I left. I realized that is not something that I could really manage. So I left there. I was home for about mm, two weeks. I have to get up and running again and you know i have my other bills to pay i have bills in jamaica so anyways um i was up and running so i took my daughter to the hairdresser one day which is probably a couple about two three blocks away from me so i was talking to the hairdresser and i was um telling her that i needed something to do and she's like oh so what you can do i'll for now i'll just do anything deep down i was like hell no i don't want to do anything but because i don't want everyone anybody to know your status you know you're like you're trying to be cute so she's like oh um, you can check that restaurant over there because they know there's a bakery and it's a restaurant and all and i'm like okay anyway the day i left with my daughter i went over there i filled out a form i immediately called the head office because i got to understand that there were three locations plus the head office so i called the head office and i spoke to this lady very nice lady by the way and i told her my situation i told her that listen i'm fresh from ja she's jamaican too and i said listen i'm fresh from ja i'd like her help I would really like your help I explained everything to her and stuff and she's like all right i'll get back to you i'll get back to you in about two or three days so i said okay while i was waiting i was still liquid still looking out and asked when i was home and i got a call and it was the manager slash owner for the place right and he called me and he said i filled out the form and stuff and realized that i'm missing the line that says ssn and and i explained to him again because i'm sure the lady would have told him but i guess he wanted to hear it from me right so i explained to him again and he said okay i'll give you back a call tomorrow okay he called later on that day he allowed me in and i started working there i didn't even get time to wet my foot as i went in i hardly got any training because the, a lady that was leaving she, she trained me for about a week and then she left so there i was um i knew the monies i knew it was in the coins and everything so it wasn't an issue it was just for me to get familiar with the stuff to where you know the system that would bail with and stuff and Two tools I was up and running. The guy himself was a nice guy. I rarely see him. But his wife suddenly started popping up, popping up and stuff. There were cameras all over the place. There were audio on the camera as well. And I'm like, but do they know that this is illegal? Having the camera is fine. But um, why the audio? So I remember I came home one day and I called my friend in Jamaica and I was telling my friend and my friend was like, but keep in mind, having you there, is it legal i'm like shut up you know so we have to when you know when i started talking to the other cashier well and stuff you know sometimes you have things that happen and i realized that they started coding and everything but i really didn't want it to be a part of that i call it a cascas i don't want to be a part of that but anyway i realized that the the wife started coming into the business and stuff she didn't know much about it but she started coming in and stuff but she was very annoying and she was very petty and right there by the way they were paying me 15 dollars an hour right um so i work mondays through saturdays i open the place remember given my situation persons were like girl you're so lucky and this and that and you know the whole works but i respected me i respected them but the wife was very petty and somehow i figured she didn't like me much and all of a sudden usually i get paid on fridays she put it in an envelope and then she'd call me in the back office and she just put it over and then I, you know 
put it in either in my in my bosom or somewhere i just put it to mask it up because i don't want anybody to know at the workplace that you were the way you are so it was good until i realized that she started giving me the money on saturday paying me on saturday then the saturday turned into monday and then all of a sudden everything became a problem i've never spoke ill of these persons because guess what they were the ones who were helping me to put food on my table i put myself in that situation i didn't run away from jamaica i chose to come here one day i called her should i said to her remember to leave the thing for me leave the envelope in the office for me and she said oh i don't have any time for that it just rubbed me the wrong way so i'm like okay the saturday when I called her and I reminded her because I said remember I'm not coming in today so I don't mind if you can possibly swing by or you know and she was like I'm so busy I don't have it and she, she started doing that for like two three weeks four weeks into a month and all and I just got fed up so one day I texted her, her husband and I said hi boss yada 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 and you know and I decided that I wasn't going back and truth be told I regretted leaving that job because I don't know I've gathered I've garnered other experiences elsewhere um and I appreciate it anyways I left there I was out of a job for about a week and I got something else from about two three days into that job I realized that this is not it about a month after I went there I left they were paying me I think it was $13 as well so I left there and I ended up somewhere else another restaurant everything seemed nice and okay and all until everything else just started to be like much of a problem so i've oftentimes been told that listen the works worst set of people to work with is your set of people at one point she told the boss that i threatened her because we got in an argument so i said to him i said bossy given my situation would you think i would have really threatened the lady and he looked at me and he said to me in all honesty no i don't believe her but because i'm in the position he owns the business as well and he's like because i'm in the pos this position i have to call you guys which is no problem of mine I like that i respected him even more for that and she came and she came with another girl that's another cashier and they plotted a lot of lies and i worked there for probably about two months and then i realized that really wasn't it because the accountant started getting into the business. What really turned me off from her was that um, we were talking one day after we had the meeting and she was like, remember that you weren't straight, you know? So um, when I just came and I wasn't straight, you know what I did? I wanted to stay all the way to the back. So I said, listen, I'm not a hypocrite. I said, I refuse to be muzzled right and we went back and forth not in an argument but you know we, we, we talked and i realized that listen this is really 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 not for me luckily mm -hmm, luckily what happened was that when i just came i admit this well really actually i didn't meet her somebody else referred me to her and she does geriatric sometimes like from time to time she'll give me a case or two right so i'm sure of that money so i wasn't really totally out so to speak as in broke or i don't have any money put up or whatever because really and truly i really wasn't pleased with what i was going through did i want it to go back home there were times that i thought about it my daughter was doing so well in school that kept me going <laughs> yeah she is she's doing so well so i was faced with a lot of you know choices to be made a myriad of choices to be made sometimes i often cry because i was just tired of it i was able to accomplish quite a number of things that had i been in the same company back in jamaica i wouldn't have been able to accomplish so i do appreciate the experiences that i've gathered over the time but when they do say that this place is no better rose believe it's not one of my biggest struggles is trying to adapt to the change of climate that's another thing the accent for the people that in itself i consider to be a minor for a while before i got straight i was there just boxing around as i said not sexually not as it relates to men or anything but just trying to find the job that really suits me this country it teaches you a lot breaks you down quickly and it builds you up slowly what you need you need good friends you need somebody who you can talk to you need you know that support just to know that somebody has your back and there are many others to be shared 
as it relates to this please like please subscribe share comment